Hello everybody, welcome to another video, and today we're unboxing the Jurassic World Hammond Collection, or should I say Jurassic Park, but Jurassic Park Hammond Collection Triceratops. Now we're just going to dive right into it by delving into the box. So, first up we're going to take a look at the front. On the front you can see the beautiful Hammond Collection logo with John Hammond idly standing there. Then you've got this wondrous Jurassic Park logo, which you can also see the reflection in. Then you've got the glass cover, which you can see the Triceratops in. Then you've got the Triceratops logo, the 8 plus logo in Mattel. Then these trees along the bottom. As far as the side goes, we've got this beautiful illustration of the Triceratops Hammond collection up the top. And the Jurassic Park logo at the bottom. And then on the back, we've got Jurassic Park up in the corner. A render of the model, Hammond Collection logo, the website, and Mattel's, what's it called, Mojo, or something like that. Empowering the next generation through play. And then we've got the Triceratops thing. Having fallen ill from eating West Indian lilac, the Triceratops, Dr. Alan Grant's favourite childhood dinosaur, makes an enormous part on the Jurassic Park tour. And then on this final side we've got a much bigger version of the Hammond Collection logo. On the top we have these nice little lights and the Tyrannosaurus again. And then we've got this information on the bottom and the barcode. And so that's basically it. Now we're going to take a 360 degree view of the box in all its glory. Just looking all around the box. Hang on, let us centre that a little bit. There we go. It's beautiful, beautiful little model, and didn't notice, but inside the box you got some little flowery details. But we'll take a look at that once we open the model, which we will now. As far as assembly goes, I'm pretty sure we got the hole in the back. I'm gonna click. That should just click, shouldn't it? And let me figure out which sides up. And there we go. So right ways up. Should be a ball joint, so it just swivels around. Yep, that looks like it's right. All right, that's Triceratops. And for now, a 360 degree view of the model while I talk about how beautiful it is. Now, this model, <laughs> look at my little finger just tapping away, but this model is, oh my god, I don't even have the words to describe it. It is gorgeous, and a lot lighter than I thought it would be. Unlike the Hammond, not Hammond, Ammo Collection Velociraptor, which is full of plastic, I'm pretty sure this one's actually hollow, but really it's an incredible model. Let's just change the lighting a bit. Um, that is a gorgeous model, but we'll get into sculpt in a minute. Now, apparently, the Triceratops from Jurassic Park are known as Triceratops Ceratus. There should be an image of a file from someone from DeviantArt of... I'll have their um, name listed there, um, but it's known as Triceratops serratus. But yeah, it's really interesting. It's got osteoderms. It's got the larger um, what do you call epoxipitals on the frill, which are these, to these little hornlets, and it's just got a wonderful little beak. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the paint job. As far as paint application goes for this thing, it's absolutely wonderful. Hang on, let's get this light shining up onto the Triceratops. Move the lamp a little bit. There we go, that's better. So you can see that it's got the little patches of grey on the face. Overall, it's a nice brown colour. 
we end up with this nice creamy, it's not, not creamy white, but just creamy cream. Um, and on the back we've got the orange little plates. And let's take a look at the head sculpt, shall we? Now, this Triceratops is based on the Jurassic Park one. If you didn't obviously see by the box, it is the Jurassic Park head sculpt. And may I say, it is gorgeous. This is the best Triceratops I've ever seen. Well, that's that might change when I get my hands on the Beast of the Mesozoic one. That'll take me a while to earn. Um, yeah, but we see the nose horn sticks out a little bit. The brow horns stick forward. So the thing is, with identifying the species of this Triceratops, most would go for Triceratops prosus because it has a short face, a short beak, a long nose horn. Unlike Triceratops horridus, let me go a model which has the the short nose horn and the long beak. And now it's very strange because the horns matter quite a lot. Um, it just varies in individuals, really. Um, I actually made a little pamphlet thing in my visual art diary about how to distinguish the two Triceratops species, and I knew it would come in handy one day. So here it is, just a look at it. Um, Triceratops horridus has a longer frill, no occipitals, short nasal horn and long beak. Let's see, can we check them off? No, well that's just in comparison with these two specimens. It's got the longer beak and the short nasal horn, but it does have occipitals. But I don't know. Back then, I thought that only Triceratops prosus had epoxipitals and Triceratops horridus did not. However, as you can see, clearly labelled is that it's based on the horridus skeleton from the Melbourne Museum video. <laughs> Check that out if you haven't already. It was wonderful. I'm definitely going to go again. But with Triceratops prosus, you've got the long nasal horn, the short beak, epoxipitals, and the shorter frill. Really, I think it's quite the opposite as far as these two models go, but they both weren't made by Mattel. So you have the long frill and the short frill, so most of them, I don't know. Go. Um, pop that to the side, or we'll pop that over there. But, yeah, this is Triceratops serratus from um, Isla Nublar. Um, now, going down to the feet. The feet are, as far as Triceratops goes, Extremely inaccurate to real life, but extremely accurate to the Jurassic Park slash world universe. The feet are splayed, well not quite splayed, but like an elephant's toes, sort of. Meanwhile, this Triceratops, only the first three toes touch the ground. The other two are practically useless and are just there for some reason. And moving along, along the back we have... The osteoderms, which are probably used to deter, deter, deter predators like the T. Rex when she got out, um, and, and then we've just got the back feet. Moving along, we've got the base of the tail, and the rest of it, which comes at a very fine tip. And I like how they painted the horns. The horns look wonderful, but let's get a look at this eye paint, shall we? Um, the eye is a nice orange with a dark brown, well not dark brown, but just a, a brown iris, a brown iris of the black pupil. And this is just, it perfectly replicates what we saw in Jurassic Park. I'll put up an image now. Okay, image time done. Now, we're going to take a look at the articulation. Okay, now I've got it up on this on the turntable. As far as neck articulate, well, let's start at the back. I don't know. We'll start up here. As far as neck articulation goes, it's very good. A very good ball joint. You can turn it upside down so it's been killed. Um, yeah. 
horns don't bend too much. But as far as mouth articulation goes, hang on a minute, what's going on? Oh yeah, there's none. Um, yeah, so. What's going on, Mattel? It's a premium figure. Why doesn't it have mouth articulation? It just bedazzles me. It makes me think, if David Silver, a self-working human being who only gets help from a few other people, and that he is a great person, love his work, and he gets help from Raw Ramos, he gets some from Sh Shen and Beaumont, they're the paleo artists. Um, he gets help from, like, I can't remember the name of the studio, but they, like, 3D print them. Um, the Utah Raptor, the upcoming Utah Raptor looks great. Uh, if you haven't seen the SDCC reveals, it looks amazing. Go check out Andy's Dinosaur Reviews video. I'm, I'll probably have it linked in the description anyway. And speaking of the links in the description, the purchase link for this will be in the description. I bought this from Big W for 35 bucks. Not bad, considering it will probably get a lot more expensive on eBay as the years go. Um, aside from my little rant, let's get to the leg articulation. The legs move forwards and backwards, not out side to side on the front legs. And we have this elbow movement, if it will move. There we go. Elbow movement front to back and then we got wrist movement which is just like this very not so much limited but not a lot of movement um so as the back legs go you got it goes backwards forwards they come out um you got knee articulation and you got ankle articulation on that there is no segments in between the body like in the t-rex which i really really want um then comes the tail we've got a ball joint in the tail so as to go up or down in that weird movement and then we've got a second ball joint in the tip of the tail which just bends it doesn't really do anything special it just bends and twists so you can do all sorts of weird movements with it but Comparing this and the Beasts of the Mesozoic Triceratops, the Beasts of the Mesozoic Triceratops has a lot more movement, especially jaw articulation, that's a bonus. Um, but, yeah. Um, overall opinion on it, I'm going to summon up the video now. As far as my opinion goes on it, buy it. If you have $35 just lying around, or 40 or whatever, buy this or the Ceratosaurus. I'll have a review up for the Ceratosaurus eventually, and I'll see how that compares to the Triceratops. But, yeah, this is a good first Hammond collection figure. Maybe a little bit expensive, and if it's out of your budget, I apologise, but it's a great little model. It Now, let's see. As far as measurements go, let's get out the good old ruler, good old red ruler. Um, oh, it's upside down. It is about 30 centimetres long. So that's pretty long for a model. Um, well, not pretty long, but it's, it's designed to scale in with all the other Mattel figures, which I love about the Hammond collection. And now let's actually get in some comparison models. Okay, first comparison we're going to get up is the Amber Collection Velociraptor. Now, it's out of frame, so we're just going to level this up a little bit. Wow, I might actually do a re-review of this with my light. Um, so, it's pretty big. This is just it compared to the trike. Um, so it's pretty interesting. pretty interesting scale difference considering this is a Velociraptor. Um, but this is, like, one of my most prized possessions. Now, moving on, we've got our regular old ACU guard. You can probably level this back down a little bit. That Velociraptor was tall, man. Um, 
And then we got a, just a regular old ACU guard looking after the Triceratops. Um, and I've heard you can do the sick Triceratops pose with this one too, like from Jurassic Park that was on the back of the cover. Um, then we have the Dino Rivals Protoceratops. And would you believe these two in, in like, in um, the Cretaceous actually lived at the same time? Or around the same time anyway? Which bedazzles me, because for me, Protoceratops is like an earlier version of this. But they lived at the same time, so how does that make sense? I don't know. Next up, we've got the Sinoceratops from the Camp Cretaceous line. There will be a review going out to this thing. I love it. It is beautiful. It is another one of my most prized possessions. And mostly because it's just a, a, a normal Sinoceratops. <sighs> I remember when Mattel stuffed it up at the start. Oh, those are the good old days. But, putting the Triceratops back, we have one last comparison. And that's Zeb. The little Giganotosaurus we unboxed in the last video. And now, I just want to say, if you guys like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want more kind of types of content like this. And I will see you in the next video. Now, I have one last request. All of you, have a great... What's it called? Have a great week. Stay safe. And... Buy this. This is really good. Alright. See you all next time. See you in the next one. Goodbye. Got the pose.